What's going on guys? Derek here from Williston Audio Labs. Today we're going to flash back a couple years ago to when I tested this Orion XTR 2500.1D. This video was very popular. In fact, it's probably one of my 5 to 10 most popular videos. As you can see here, it's got around 243,000 views. And a lot of people really like this one. Well, these Orion XTR amps, the new ones, they look a lot like the old ones. You can see this one here from the 90s the 250SX, and I keep getting people ask all the time, Big D, can you test another Orion amp? Well, why not? Let's try the XTR 1500.1DZ. Picked up one off Amazon for $219.95. I have been told this amp is discontinued, and yes, I did buy this amp. It was not sent to me by Orion, so everything I'm going to say here is my thoughts. Nobody swaying me to say anything. Let's open up the box and see. Here's the test certificate, 1755 actual power. We're going to get back to that here shortly. But first, let's look at all the different things that come in the box. You can see it's nicely packed up. Here's the amplifier itself. Then we have some additional accessories, including the manual. We have the remote base knob with the 3.5 millimeter connection that I'm not a huge fan of. We have a link cable, because these amps are linkable. We have mounting hardware and also some hex screws. And here's a manual which covers several different XTR models. And mine actually came with some headphones too. I don't think these were supposed to be in the box, but it could have just been the seller I got it from. Here's the dimensions of the amp, 11.5 inches by 9 inches, so about the size of a sheet of paper. And the height is anywhere between 2.5 and, and 2.85 inches, depending on which part of the amp you're looking at. The amp does come with the hex keys, but unfortunately doesn't come with one that fits the end cap screws. Fail! So we had to get out our trusty Harbor Freight T-handle, the 4 millimeter that you need to get these off. These are plastic end caps. And here you can see Tiffany style inputs, level control, subsonic filter off or on, bass boost variable from 0 to 18 dB, remote bass connection, low pass crossover, a variable phase, slave and master, and then also the link connection. On the opposite side, you have zero gauge for negative and positive. You have a remote terminal, and then you also have your speaker outputs, which work with around eight gauge. The amp is pretty small in size, and for being a 1500 watt amp, it's, it's pretty decent. You can see here compared to my hand, but as always, we like to see what kind of power these things do. So let's fire up the amp dyno. We're going to run it through the test here. First off, we're going to start with the 4 ohm test. It's rated 600 watts RMS power. And that's at 12.6 volts. We're going to have a little bit more than that. Let's see what we get. Up to 1% THD, 40 hertz. We get 849 watts at 13.99. Quite a bit more than the 600. Uncertified takes us up to clipping. And check this out, it just keeps going. 931 watts at 13.87 volts. Dynamic. 943. Yep, counting up a little bit. 944, 947. Ooh, 951. All right, the amp performed very well at 4 ohms. Let's try the 2 ohm test. It's rated 975 watts. Let's try certified 1% THD at 40 hertz. And we easily bust that 1226 at 13.97 volts. Uncertified takes us up to clipping. This is the part that I like. Are you ready? It gets more than 1,500 watts at 2 ohms, 1,533, 13.59. Dynamically, 40 hertz, it's like a kick drum, 1,602 watts. Yeah, boy! All right, now we're going to do the 1 ohm test, rated 1,500 watts RMS power. See what we get, certified up to 1% THD at 40 hertz. 1592 at 13.26. Now, 
The actual power on the birth certificate says 1755, but we're gonna come back to that. So now let's try uncertified, which takes us up to clipping. Look at this, 2192 watts at 13.45, incredible. Dynamic 2200 and 54 at 13.33, very nice. Damn All right, so once again, the Orion amp does not fail to meet any of its specs. Around 850 watts at 4 ohms, 1,226 at 2 ohms, and almost 1,600 at 1 ohm. But I know what you guys are thinking. What about this 1,755 watts that it shows on the actual test sheet? What's up with that? Well, take a closer look at the audio precision printout. I'm going to show you here. See the line where it says 1500 watts? And look where the line is. It's closer to 1600. I think somebody fluked on this dyno sheet that they provided. So let's open it up and check out the internals and see what that's all about. Here you can see the board layout. Orion does have their own build houses, so these are not OEM'd by somebody else. Here you can see the cap. See the 100 volt, 1000 microfarad for the rails. You can see some of the other components there. And also the 105 degrees for the input, 25 volt, 2200 microfarad for those. They are different brands, which is kind of odd, and some are 85 degrees and some are 105. Not real sure what's up with that. But now I'm gonna tell you about the good stuff. First off, the power output exceeded its rated power. The aesthetics, I really like the way these things look. They remind me of the old school amps. They have a lot of features a lot of really useful features. The value is incredible. It does come with a remote base knob and it's also linkable. Now what about the things that could be better? Well, the test sheet result could be a little bit more accurate. Too bad it's a little high there. The variable subsonic, it just has a switch for off and on. We'd not like to have a variable. The plastic base remote's kind of cheesy. The end caps, I'm not a huge fan of, but I have heard a lot of people that say they really like those. There's no hex key included for the end caps, and this model is discontinued, which is a bummer, but I've heard there's a nicer, newer model coming out. So if you wanna buy this one at the great price or hold off for the next model, that's up to you. Well, I appreciate you guys watching as always. Hope you'll give me a thumbs up for the video. Hope you'll maybe subscribe if you like my content. Also check me out over at patreon.com slash oldschoolstereo. And a big shout out to all my supporters over there who help out. They help me with the videos and enjoy bringing you guys content. Until next time, Big D, I'm out of here. All right, so if you ever watch my channel, you know to stick around after the credits because I always have some good stuff. Today we're going to look at a 1994 acoustic design reference, 514DR. This is a killer Looking at amplifier, and this one's actually brand new. Got it in for my friend Michael to give it a test for him. And I was going to make its own video, but a lot of these old school amps just don't do that well on their own video. But look how beautiful this amp is. This polished aluminum design with this gold DR logo design reference. On the end, you can see the 225 amp fuses. You can see the connections there for power and ground. It's only 8 gauge wire. But I mean, this is a four channel amp. It's not hugely powerful. There's the RCA inputs. It actually has balanced inputs as well. And then look at the internals of this thing. It is just gorgeous. Look at the layout. Look at all the copper. There's a lot of copper that's literally just exposed and it looks like coat hangers going inside the amp. It is insane. I've never seen another amp like this so wild but here you can see the amp hooked up with the eight gauge very short eight gauge and then i have the amp connected up so let's try four ohm first it's rated 50 watts by four we're measuring two channels the other two channels are loaded and you can see 54 47 so right at its rated power certified uncertified we're using the 40 hertz test here right about the same right about 50 watts per channel Dynamic burst, we did get a higher number here, uh, 78 and 77. And again, our voltage is a little bit higher than people like to see, I know, for these old school amps, but it is what it is. Sorry, I'm using the lithium. Two ohm test, rated 75 watts by four at 13.8. Unfortunately, I did not capture 
the certified run on video, but you'll see the result here at the end. 96 and 85 watts, so easily beat its rated power. Dynamic, look at that. 120, 127, that was nice. So now let's try the amp bridge. It is a four channel amp. It's rated 150 watts by two if we bridge it. So let's see what we get here, certified at four ohms. Look at this, 273 and 288. That was at one kilohertz. Uncertified again at one kilohertz, 283, 288. Incredible. Now the dynamic run here, we ran at 40 hertz because most of the time we want to see like what a subwoofer does dynamically, but 276, 269, extremely good power output. All right, here's the amp dyno sheet. You can see the results. The amp performed very well at all the tests. I actually tested 40 hertz and one kilohertz. You can see one kilohertz over on the right side. And again, just to show how beautiful this amp is, I'm gonna show you some B-roll footage here of the amp. It's just gorgeous. So again, hope you guys like this. I'm gonna pop up some other videos here that you guys can click if you wanna see some of my other content. Thanks as always for watching. I will be back with another amp test soon. Big D, you know where I'm at. I ain't gonna say it. Peace out, fellas.